Websites will typically have a header and footer which remain either exactly the same or very similar across multiple pages on the website. On this site, we're currently looking at index.html. And if you compare the HTML content from the, this content div to the top of the page, you'll see it's exactly the same as on another page. Let's pick blog.html. So from here to here is exactly the same. In Jekyll, we can use layouts to eliminate this repetition and make the site much easier to maintain. To start with, we'll create a new directory in our website called underscore layouts. And inside this, create a new file called default.html. This file will contain all the content that repeats across multiple pages. Let's get that content from index.html. So all this content here repeats, we'll cut that, put it in default.html. And then at the bottom of the page, we also have a footer and the end of that content div. So we'll cut that as well and put it in default.html. Now we need a placeholder for where the content of the page is going to go. Jekyll makes this available to us using a content variable, which we can output using liquid. So to output using liquid, it's two double braces, and then we'll type content. So this layout's ready to go. Let's use it on the index page. I'll add front matter to the top of the file. And in front matter, we have a special variable called layout, uh, where I can specify a layout I want to use for this page. In this case, it's default. And that's all I need to do. Now, when I load my page, it looks exactly as it did before. And if I view the source code, you can see the content from the layout is included on the page. And I'll change blog.html to use the layout as well. So I'll get rid of the content that's already in the layout. And then specify the layout in front matter. There we go. In the next example, I'll demonstrate layout inheritance. So in this example, let's say I'm building a whole lot of landing pages and they're all going to have this hero section here. If I take that hero section and put it in the default layout, you can see it's going to put that hero image on every single page, which I don't want. One option to get around this is I could create a new layout. Let's call it page.html. Um, copy the default layout across and then copy the hero image into that layout. Then I could delete that from index.html and use the page layout. The problem with this is there's still a lot of repetition between default and page. And we can get rid of this by layout inheritance. So we'll get rid of the content that's already in default.html and specify a layout. So here we're outputting the hero section, followed by the page content, and we're using a layout which is going to wrap around all this content here. So let's create a new page to use these layouts. So we'll create landing page .html. Um, first we'll try out the default layout, so layout default, and we'll just add some content here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So it's added the content to the page and it has the basic um, header and footer. Now let's try the other layout to have the hero section. So we'll change the layout to page. 
and now we have a hero section here. In the last example, we'll use front matter to change this heading. So we'll open the page layout, and instead of this being text, we'll make it a variable, which we'll specify in front matter. So to access that variable, it's page.theName, and let's call it hero text. In the pages that use this layout, I just need hero text in the front matter. So here I'll have hero text landing page. And here I'll have hero text home page. And you can see landing page outputs the landing page text and home page outputs the home page text. Another place this is useful is in specifying page titles. So if I go to the default layout, instead of home being the title for each page, let's make it a variable. So page.title. And then on all my pages, I can specify a title. So this is landing page, blog, and home page. When I view the source here, you can see it's picking up the page title from the front meta now. One quick note about the difference between Jekyll 2 and 3 in regards to layouts is if I'm setting front meta inside a layout, so here we're in the page layout, I'll add a variable, test text is hello. In Jekyll 2, I could output that using the page variable, test text like this. In Jekyll 3, they've changed this because uh, there were some edge cases and it was confusing to some users. So now instead of page, you would use layout. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.